morning guys and welcome back today is Monday February 24th this may be our only vlog of the week sorry vlog of the week as we have to attend uh, to some business matters a lot of business matters and some meetings this week on Thursday this past Thursday we played eight hours and we lost twenty six hundred dollars uh, to start off been getting uh, getting into a few cooler spots and then we decided to gamble at the very last hand of the night and you this that will be the hand issue we we'll talk about but after losing 30 2600 I was not thrilled so I what I did was I just took Friday off did a lot of resting and prepping so that we could go Saturday hard and then I went Saturday from 7 in the morning Saturday to 7 a.m. Sunday 24 hours and won a little bit over $3,000. I'm gonna go ahead and filter our stats for uh, just Winstar because that's where the bulk of our session is. For the year, we are up a little bit under $13,500 after a little bit over 315 hours, putting us slightly a little bit over $42 per hour. We have won 17 out of 32 sessions as Winstar, giving us a 30, a 53% win rate. Not bad, but uh, I think we could, uh, we definitely could be win a lot more since our win rate is a little, is around 60%. So let's go ahead and jump into the uh, hand history. This is the interesting hand of the. It was on Thursday, Saturday. There weren't that many tough or tricky spots. It, I just it was just one of those sessions where I just dissected everybody and just kind of chipped up little by little. So the setup of this hand goes is we start off with the under the gun that was straddle. We start off with under the gun two. He's a new fish. I never seen him before, never played with him. And he limps. He has his stack is eight hundred dollars and he limps. Then I am in middle position one. I also have $800. I look down, I see nine, 10 of spade. And this is a mistake, <laughs> definitely. I limped, I was busy talking and uh, my mind was somewhere else and I didn't, so I made a mistake and I accidentally limped. I should have raised and there's nothing, there's no excuses except it was a mistake. And it might have been a costly mistake. We will talk about it at the end. Then he goes to the cutoff, who's a regfish. I played with him a few times, and he his stack is 500, so he's the effective stack. And he limps. Small blind and big blind folds. It comes around to the straddle, the under the gun. We'll call him the best, because he's a young kid. Self-proclaimed the best. So we'll, we'll let him uh, keep his name today. And uh, so he checks. We go to a pot of $45, and the flop is 10, 8, 7, rainbow. Pretty good for our flop, a uh, top pair plus a gut shot. Then the best leads out for 25. New fish calls. So there's really not, no other play here. We could raise to try to squeeze, but we still have one player left behind, and this is just a flop where if we get called, it would... It, there's, I guess there wouldn't be that many favorable cards like a, in our way, in, in our favor. And we don't want to risk getting re-raised back and not get to realize our equity. So, and we have position. So I think the better call, the better play was to just call and evaluate the turn versus raising and then maybe getting blown off our hand. Because it was a, it was a limp pot. Uh, it, it goes around to a uh, regfish then, who raises to 125. So this bet was slightly on the smaller side. So my initial read was that this is a this is probably a two pair, maybe even a top pair, top kicker kind of hand because I've seen him done this before, squeeze raise with just one pair, a strong pair. Or he could have be semi bluffing, but I don't think he's semi bluffing against four people. So my my knee thoughts are that he either has ace ten, king ten, or eight some kind of something with a nine in there, like ten nine, like mine, eight nine, seven nine. And then the best calls 
And then it goes to new fish who calls also. So now we have a pot of $450 and I have $765 left. If I call here, I'll have $665 left. So my thought was, well, if I shove here, there's four hundred fifty dollars dead money. Who? What? Who? Let's see who could call me. We know new fishes uh, can't call. Probably out of the picture. It's hard for him to call because if he had anything strong, he would have raised. Redfish can definitely call. If redfish call, if he is ahead of me, I'm not that far behind him unless I, he has a set or he has a straight already. But my initial read was that he doesn't have a straight based on his uh, bet sizing. It goes then. We have the best, who is a thinking player, so he could definitely be trapping here to by with his call to bring in both new fish and me because the best does. I think he, when given the chance, he will try to outplay me, and this is a good spot for him to call with a pretty strong hand because he did bet out as well. I he could also have the hands, the ranges that we also put uh. Redfish on as well, some kind of combo draw with a pair. So if I shove here, and if I could get through them, then I pick up four hundred fifty day dead money. But if I get called, I'm not. I'm just crushed by Jack Nine. I'm really pretty far behind Six Nine. I'm not that far behind any two pair, any you could say set combo. I don't think anybody has a set because of the best sizing and the the actions. So I'm either against two pair or I'm being trapped. And if I'm being trapped, I still have decent equity. Unless I'm facing Jack Nine, then I'm just hoping for a chop. So I I go ahead and go all in for seven hundred sixty five more. Then Rigfish, of course, because his stack is small. He goes ahead and calls. And just as he calls, the best instant shove his stacks in. We got trapped. And then it comes to Newfish, who tanks, tanks, tanks for a long time, and then decides to call as well. So the pot is almost $3,000 at this point. So what we did, was, so our gamble was we risked $765 to... Uh, Win about twenty four hundred, which means that we only need about a equity of around twenty seven, twenty eight percent to uh, for this to be a break even play. I think my equity is a little bit less. I think this was a minus EV shove if I run the numbers, but it's not that far off. But because of the potential to pick up the pot if they all folded, that I think that pushed this play to a neutral EV or a slightly positive EV. Somebody has to do the calculation. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. I think this is a uh, break even play. The math won't probably won't tell much. So the the turn comes at nine, right? Give me two pairs. So I, I now I have a chance. I beat a lot of two pairs, but. I don't think I'm I'm ahead here still. I probably need a six or a jack, or now uh, I ten or nine will also go bolt me up. And the river comes a blank, a deuce, and the best flips over six nine for the flop straight. New fish flips over. 10-7 for two pair. So we would have beat him. And then Redfish flips over 10-7 also. So we would have beat him as well. But unfortunately, the best had us all covered and he scoops a pot for uh, over close to $3,000. So in this hand, you're the best, kid. But let's go back into think about it. The mistake that I thought about it more, it, had I raised pre-flop, with the limp, it would have been to around fifty dollars. I think red, I think redfish would have called because uh, he's he was down, he was 
looking to gamble. So then the question is, would have would the best have called here? And I thought about it. So of course, if the best hadn't called, we would have won the pot, right? We would have sucked out on the turn one. But I think given this, given that new fish has limped and red fish calls a raise, I think that the best would have called my raise also as well to complete the straddle. So I don't think my raise would have. Eliminated him. There was a slight chance there was so that's also that's always that's gonna be the Something that's hanging that we'll never know but other than that I I Don't see anything different. I So I part I my guess is if I had to say that I would have lost the book pot anyway The only thing that's different is I could have folded to the 125 because somebody could also have a nine and have my same draw so I could, uh, or some, I guess somebody had outs out straight, so my outs are limited. But it's a tough spot, I don't know. Uh, there's nothing we could do about it at this point, and uh, let's go ahead and move on. So, that was the history of the day. Uh, we'll go ahead and go meditate, and then, uh, talk a, then talk a little bit about reflection, kind of reflect on some stuff, and then we'll just kind of close out for this week. See you in a bit. Welcome back guys so this is a story that uh, I see a lot at Windstar right uh, player comes in he sits down plays a little bit of poker gets bored so then he orders some food to eat not out of hunger or uh, nutrition or sustenance but out of boredom so the guy eats the food and after a while he eats this really heavy greasy or uh, unhealthy food then after a while he gets groggy so what does he do he gets sleepy so he orders a red bull energy drink then he guzzles it and then next thing you know his energy level just shoots up and because of that it eventually it causes a lot of different desires to arise right when our energy levels goes up we start desiring more things and we start wanting to this and that and then when he gets bored so what does he do he orders a alcoholic drink so he starts drinking and then after a while of course gets drunk then wants to eat so it and then he and it goes again and goes so it goes through this cycle of just eating and just zapping your energy and then filling it with synthetic energy and over and over and this goes so what is what is happening is the guy is depleting his vitality which is what we want to focus on today because vitality is a combination of both physical and mental energy and last week we talked about discipline and effort right we, in order to have discipline we, we need to generate that effort to control ourselves and to be able to resist our desires but how do we generate effort if we don't have vitality because we don't have the energy to overcome the resistance of our mind to and overcome the mind's desire to do whatever it wants right it's easy to give in when we don't have that vitality so in order for us to get better and discipline ourselves and improve but we need vitality 
But we cannot have a vitality if we don't take care of our, our body and wash the things that go into our body so that our energy is not used up in processing all this unnatural and non-nutritious food only to have it go out as waste and we didn't get anything beneficial to our body in it. And then we have to watch our mind from thinking about too many things that have no value or no relevance to our life anymore. Because when we do, what happens is that we stir up our emotions. We could get angry, we could get jealous, or we could get upset. And these emotions start sucking up our vitality as well. And by the time something important comes around, we don't have any more energy or any more vitality to focus on it and concentrate. So then we are unable to do anything well because we don't have the energy anymore. So the best way for us to start getting, gain, getting better is to just watch ourselves and make sure that we don't deplete our vitality every day because we only have so much energy every day after we rest. And the food that we put into our body should give us vitality. It should not take away from our vitality. And then the thoughts that we have, really we should try to still our mind because when we do hold our mind still, what happens is that the, uh, the calmness puts us in back our body into equilibrium. So we have now we just move and then it's much it's much easier to focus and concentrate on things because our mind hasn't been sucked up on uh, the our mental energy has been sucked up on useless things. But it goes back to again to that you can we cannot hold we cannot preserve our mind from thoughts if we don't meditate and practice the the, the exercise of concentration and focus. So it goes back again. We gotta practice. We gotta practice every day, and then from being able, from being mentally aware, we can then be aware of the stuff that we do to put in our food, the body. So I think that's it for today. I my goal, the goal here is to try to see that in order for us to do anything, we need energy, mental energy, and in order to, to have that mental energy, we need to not drain it doing unnecessary and wasteful things. That was quick. I probably won't be seeing you guys for until at least next week if we get into a session this week. So uh, I will see you next week.